Let's see how to use the auto.arima function in the forecast package. So, uh, after installing the forecast, forecast package, which is loaded this way, and I will be reading a CSV file. Here this will contain uh, the amount of sales for every month from August 2012. So after that I will be transforming this into a time series object. I will be using the R dollar symbol sales, this one. Uh, the, my frequency here will be 12 because I will have 12 months. If I had weeks, this would be 52. If I had days, this would be 365. And the start date here would be 2012, um, August. So if I run this, now I can see and inspect my time series object. It has um, a different format. Maybe this is uh, better for analyzing uh, or for looking for seasonality patterns. We can see all the Januarys and all the Februarys and all the March. So we can see whether this, there was a specific pattern happening for these months or not. So this kind of arrangement is, is quite useful when you are like looking at, at these numbers. And it might help you later because if you identify that there is a um, specific um, monthly pattern, you can then include it in your into your model. So after we have that, we can plot the time series using this very simple function. And here we have uh, what we wanted. It's fairly straightforward. We can see that specifically in the, in, for this series, it's quite um, stationary. It doesn't seem to have a very different variance. Maybe we have this huge thing here, but it's not that the variance is changing too, too dramatically. And the mean seems to be quite consistent across the across time so after we have that um, we need to execute the proper arima model so auto.arima will select the best arima model among uh, a huge subset of models so uh, the way we run this is by doing this and then we can do a summary We can see that the model that was chosen here was um, this one. It has one for the autoregressive term, zero for the order of differentiation, and zero for the moving average term. And then the coefficients that I got will obviously correspond to this. We can see that this had non-zero mean, so that's why we get an intercept here. This is the standard error of the intercept. We can see that it's reasonably small compared to the intercept. And we can also see that the standard error of the autoregressive term is obviously quite small compared to the coefficient. And then we have the Akaike and Bayesian information criterion and so on. We, we do have more information, but essentially we came up in just one uh, line of code with a quite um, nice Arima model that apparently works reasonably well. Now, it would be a good idea to forecast this. So let's uh, see what the forecast is. So the nice thing about uh, plot.forecast is that it will plot the forecast, but it will also plot the 80% and the 95% confidence intervals. So in this case, you can see that the because of the nature of the autoregressive um, process of, of one lag, of the R1, this uh, forecast stabilizes quite easily and it's fairly, fairly smooth. So yeah, we, now with this, we can, we can work and we can um, do whatever we want with the predictions. Remember that the, the predictions will look like this. So here we have the point forecast and the low 80%, the high 80%, the low 95 and the high 95. So we can then export this and do whatever we want to do. And you can see here that because of the nature of the R1, this is basically the same value after almost six, maybe eight periods. So after eight periods, it's basically the same value. And finally, uh, we should always look at, 
uh, into the residuals. There are several ways of doing this. The easiest one is to plot uh, dot ts. So here I have what I wanted. I can see that the residuals look uh, quite um, quite good. I don't see any particular structure. I don't see any difference in variance here. So I'm quite happy with these results. The other thing that we should look here is the normality of these residuals. Remember that they should be normal, so we can do residuals. So they're fairly, fairly um, normal. Remember that the normal line is this uh, 45 degree line, so they're practically over over it. So we can conclude that they are they are also normal. And the final thing that we could do here is do an ACF of p residuals, and we can also verify that this model does not have any kind of structure after it. So our model produced residuals that are uh, normal, that they don't have structure, and they seem to have a consistent variance through all the through all the data set.